Uh, I'll do a little introduction. Okay. So there is a lot of introduction on the online already. Uh, look up on our channel, Hukola, Human Colony, and you will see introductions. Uh, there is a video introduction. Now I just want to say for the newcomers that we'll start traditionally for me laying down and Jim doing Reiki. Reiki is a healing energy art. So I will receive the healing and that's how our channel started. It, it was a healing session and then um, our friendly galactic friends uh, started speaking to, to us. Um, and also I received some healing. I need a little bit of healing today. So, But sometimes it is just a formality because when reptilian came, it was not that healing. Thank you, reptilian. But it was a little painful when you tried. Maybe, maybe it worked, but it was a little painful. Important message for today, Jim really needs the money. Uh, and so we invite the donations. He can pay the bills. So if you want, can, can support it, that would be great because it takes a lot of my time and a lot of Jim's energy to make this happen. So if you can support us, even a little donation is a big encouragement. And I can justify to my family why I'm doing, spending most of my time on that. Now, now it's about 90% of my time goes into these projects. Um, also, Jim is now available for channeling, personal channeling sessions over the phone, over the Skype and video Skype. Contact me and I will forward you to Jim's email and you will and or Skype and you will get you in touch and he will um, he will schedule a session for you. And um, now we have to reduce the price again $40 per half an hour, $80 for an hour of pure channeling plus whatever is introduction and afterwards non channeling doesn't count. These are all the announcements. Uh, we had very nice visitors lately. It was uh, I spoke to Yahweh, I spoke to Jesus. Okay, I didn't speak to Jesus. Jesus spoke to me, um, but we are grateful and welcome. Jesus is one of the most welcome guests here. If he comes through, that would be exciting. Mm -hmm. um, Buddha, thank you. Muhammad, thank you. I guess for Buddha we need to do different gestures, and for Muhammad. Jim just will, and I'll let me continue and then I'll speak about that. Uh, any higher energies are very welcome. Um, our friends from the colony, from uh, Ashtar, Ashtar, Ash, Ashtar himself, Ashtar Command, Galactic Federation of Light, Association of Worlds, um, our main, main of con connections in, uh, in, in the, uh, among the, uh, the aliens and the angel. Everybody is welcome. Fairies were, fairies brought us so much more popularity. So fairies are very welcome. We are, uh, and they are fun to talk to. <laughs> um, any major announcements? I made some announcements, some proposals, and I would. I'm waiting for, uh, for the answers. Uh, so if this do can come through an answer about uh, my proposal about volunteer hybridization program, that's I think would be the major next step announcements about the plans for the open contact and things of that sort a any of that the species which is a new part of the new part of the alliance Pleiadian Arcturian uh, Yael Liran Al alliance now join is joined by the next species and we will welcome them to introduce themselves Jim said that uh, we are too negative asking for more money for more money than just say that well, I thought it, I wanted to be more positive, so I was asking uh, Max if asking for donations was actually necessary or if it was a negative sort of thing. So I, I sort of feel that it's sort of negative sometimes for people listening. They don't want to really hear about our problems. They really want us to, you know, be more positive and, and you know, let the spirits work and give them some uh, food for thought and learning and teaching. So I was wondering if that was just maybe me, but I I feel a little uncomfortable about it sometimes, but. <laughs> yeah, uh, so how, you know, it's, it's not basically not what you say, it's how you say it. Maybe. Yeah. First message is we really love what we are doing. 
we understand, you know, I understand that this is a major accomplishment mm. in my life. After having kids and bringing them up, this would be the major accomplishment in my life that help with the contact and help with the awareness. Yeah, I love doing that, yes. And that's why I'm doing that, that's for sure. I wish to do more of that, and I need your help to do more of that. That's one thing. And how do you, how do you take being poor? How do you take it? Well, I try to be positive, and I try to use the law of uh, attraction. And um, it works to a, a great amount, but it's... Right now, where there's so much going on, it's hard to do as many meditations as I used to do. And I'm working with the homeless and doing things like that, so um, I need more time in my day. <laughs> so, so on Sun, uh, so you know, being poor is not a shame, but it's a big hustle. Um, yeah, somebody a donated a television set to my friend, and my friend found it's an old television set. It's big and you know, huge, so she didn't want it. So I still had to drive to pick up Jim, to gra grab this television set, bring it to his house so he can donate to poor because he has that activity, he, he, they have the house full of... Um, yeah, the Dorothy Day house, yes. Uh, f uh, homeless. homeless, homeless now have a home. Yes. And they need stuff. Uh, so they would, need, would have this old television set and they'll be happy about that, yes. which is nice. And we also get some other donations. But for me it was a hassle. And Jim... Although he you know, he was wearing broken glasses, like 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 broken glasses with one thin uh, handle, and uh, I ordered the glasses for him, but I had to guess his vision, which was another thing. They were made in China for twelve dollars, brought here, and thanks Robbie for for donating the, the the money. But you know his vision wasn't good enough, so he brought his car. So his car lost the the mirror and part of the front bumper. So I, I'm from Russia. I know how to fix these things. So the mirror was was fixed with using the duct tape by by his uh, one friend, and I brought a piece. How do you call it? Vinyl, vinyl, yeah, floor, vinyl, vinyl floor cover. So now my my and patched. I took I put a, like a big piece of vinyl on it. And it was cold. It was freezing cold on on the car. And Jim and look at it, and it looked so strange to him and even look to me because it was like a big piece of vinyl but then I took scissors and you know it was cracking because it was too cold so I, I screwed it to the car you know use an electric electric drill luckily I have that and use duct tape until it took a shape of the car and now it looks quite pretty so Jim is happy I'm happy you know obviously <laughs> you. now somebody needs to donate us a bumper <laughs> I do need right. a bumper. I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> but yeah, we, we, we need to look at the junk yard. And I know they're cheap. Okay. Yeah. Well, I know somebody that will put it on if I get it. Yeah, I mean, it could be $50 used bumper. Well, my friend Brandon would put it on if I got it. So So we need to find a broken uh, whatever car. And I, he ordered me a new mirror, too, for $23. So that's yeah. So thanks for all the help. We, uh, so the store, I opened the store and donations stopped coming. Uh, and the store brought us one sale, uh, $8 income, uh, and that's it. So I will still keep it on site in, le uh, in case, you know, rich people come and buy f nice stuff. Then it has, has nice incense and stuff there. But, but please uh, don't stop your donations. They're really helping us. Um, one, a couple more things. Um, Mohammed gave us a message. So remember, Mohammed just recently came, and I asked him if he wrote the Quran, and he said yes, and with help of God. And I was, you know, when I read the Quran, and uh, I just looked randomly in different places, it says everywhere, you know, kill infidels. So now, what was the message of Mohammed? Mohammed came to me last night, actually, actually a couple different. Uh, people, spirits, came to me last night. One of the things that Mohammed said was he did not write kill the infidels or death to the infidels. That was added later. He said he might have written it maybe once, but it was in the context that it was not infidels in general. It was specific infidels. So 
he he admitted writing it a couple times or once or twice, but he did not put that many death to the infidels in there. Somebody added that later, and it, he was uh, still happy, but he was displeased that they would add that. So, and he said that he didn't know about it. He said he was unaware of it because he had it looked at it for a while. Spirits don't re really go back and. <laughs> So I find I it know. hard to believe the whole story because first, it yeah. was very recent event. It was only 13 or 14 centuries ago. At that yeah. time, people wrote uh -huh. extensively. So I think even maybe original writing by Muhammad is somewhere. So it's hard to believe that you know, Bible was written in the, in the older times, but yes. but um, Quran was written when civilization was flourishing, and it's really hard to add so much changes after he wrote. So that is questionable. Maybe there is an answer. I just don't know. And second, if he doesn't know what's written in the Quran, it means he knows nothing about what happens on earth. Mm -hmm. So his advice of being happy is still valid, but with a correction that we understand that he knows nothing about what is happening here. And I get that feeling from some spirits, though. That they, they don't visit here all the time, so... We There's still, a lot of other places to go. We still pay my respect to that energy. I think the energy is valid. Mm -hmm. uh, his message was valid. But now we invite him to learn more about our life. How about speak to us more, speak to other people more, and pay more attention to what is happening here. I think what's happening here is important, and it requires some learning on their side as well. Mm -hmm. Maybe he needs to incarnate a little bit more here. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll do the session. If I feel like jumping up and standing, I will do that. Okay. All right. Let me meditate for a minute. I also invite my higher self, my guides, Nina and Peter, to visit. I have tons more questions for Lakesh from the viewers, so whenever he comes, we'll have these questions as well. For you, Max. Lakesh. Good morning. Hello. It is morning, correct? More or less. Ten twenty. Classical morning. Late morning. I wrote a poem for you because you asked for one and I did not give you one last time. I appreciate it. Poems are wo very welcome. I forget. You wanted love, but I did not write it about love. Is that okay? You still owe me a poem on love. Well, this one's not it. One moment. Ah, that's better. But I think you'll like it. Thank you. Thin strands of knowledge hold up mountains of information. And I look for more support for that. But I am washed away by the melting caps of the mountains into oblivion. Washed away like there was nothing there. But yet I find myself being bent by these small, thin, knowledgeable strands. They bend my thoughts and make me think that I am a misunderstanding or at times that I am within the grasp of full knowledge. But yet thin strands of knowledge hold up your mental condition as well. Intellect falling into little pits of despair, intellect falling into swirling dynamics, but yet 
these thin strands of knowledge help us to lead ourselves into mountains of information. Thank you very much. Did you like that? Yes, yes, wonderful, thanks. Can you read us more poetry, whatever you like? You said you wanted love. Yes. Love poetry. Love poetry. Love poetry is very hard to translate for this planet. It's so different here. It's so much more palpable on your planet. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yes. Yes. I figured you would. Whatever you like. Can you read more poetry? Oh, well, I was not prepared to read anything but that one. But I will give you something else. What would you like? You would love, okay, love. Mm -hmm. Oh, I wrote this when I was 12. Mm -hmm. The chakra heart seeping out something different, something new. In your direction, I point my energy, and it becomes something more than just energy. I question how I feel because I feel differently than ever before. And your eyes look different to me than they ever did before. I wonder if my perception is gone. But yet, I know as I grow that you are part of who I am because our energies mix so differently than others. Thank you. That is beautiful. Thank you. How about reading... Uh your favorite po poem by others, written by someone else. Another poem, something yes, else? by your favorite, or your favorite author. Oh, there is, it's sometimes hard to translate these poems into English, you understand that. Yeah, take the one that... We take the most artistic earth route with our language, but our language is different and uses words differently than your language does. So, when I read this next poem, you may not understand it. Okay. Because the way and uh, the placement of the words are just not human. Let's see how it goes. Okay. Well, okay, if you would really like me to do that. Thank you. Let me find it. Grand or epic, malevolent, malevolent, sounding grand, talking fissures, standing tall, relating to the sign of different sects of genes in science. Sorrowful is the green, sorrowful green night, thirsty for energy in the positive realm, broken by fourth, driven by third, the science of dreams sends down the thoughts of trees and plants, and no one shares the cosmos with a handful of dirt. Great! It's very good. Do you understand it? I understand some of it, for sure. It has... I would say, yeah, I have... I, I sense several layers of, of, of meanings which make sense to me. Okay, very good. Uh, is third and fourth, uh, or fifth and fourth, is this dimensions or anything else? It would translate dimensional and otherwise. We have yes. third and fourth, which have double meanings. Uh -huh. So, yes, 
third and fourth would be dimensional as well as third and fourth levels of education, third and fourth levels of relationships. Perfect. Perfect. More poetry, please, because, you know, it is, first of all, I'm collecting the book of poetry, collection of poetry. It will be the first galactic collection of poetry ever on Earth. Mm. If you don't count Bible. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Second after Bible. I see. Um, whatever you like. Oh, okay. Uh, but don't you would rather have something else other than poetry? Poetry is oh. so much more condensed. I see. What would you like it to be about? How about God? God, okay. Would you like it in our language or yours? Let's start with your language and then translation. Oh, I mean, would you like it interpreted in yours or ours? I interpret it to our language, of course. Okay. About God, did you say? Yes. God, okay. I bring myself down into meditation, up through meditation, and the air around me, the atmosphere charged with that unlike the body, with that unlike the soul. You are what brings life into me, which brings me up from my down, which brings me through when I cannot make it through. And you are the light that is killing my darkness. And you are the light that is bringing no shadow for me. I run toward you in my spirit mind, and I catch only the shining element that you leave behind. Wonderful, thank you. How about the poem which is, should be favorite for the blues about being pacifists and neutralists and keeping peace at any cost? Peaceful poetry. Ooh. Let me see. That would have to go back some. We're always at peace. It's nothing that we write about recently because there's no reason to read about it and because it's here. <laughs> um, just a moment, but I can go back some. Eyes open, heart open. There is nothing between us. Eyes closed, heart closed, there is friction everywhere. The night bleeds into the day and then is healed. We are as one, but we are separate. We fight for our right to be together, united in our movement toward the light and then we find all we need to do is open our eyes once again open our hearts once again and then there is peace thank you very good how about something most popular on your culture on your planet right now what's trending Maybe even a song, if, if not a poem. Most trending? There's many trends. There's many things happening. All right, what is mostly uh, liked by teenagers? Celebrations. No, I mean the poetry. Ah, well, they like, they like celebrations and poems about celebrations and things that are happy and very much more childlike. What's the song which is top on the on the on the list? Top the first top song on the list for teenagers. Oh, the song, I have no idea. <laughs> All right, whatever. 
whatever comes to your mind. What's most popular? What do you teach kids in uh, in a school? We teach them how to become mature adults and to be loving and caring, educated, learn how to get their um, privileges, learn how to work in the the belt. Excellent. And uh, just learn them, learn how to get proper balance Excellent. in their mentalities, and in their emotions, and in their spirit, and in their body. Look, on the earth there is tons of humans who never are interested in poetry. But if you ask them for a poem, they will remember at least one or two from their kindergarten or school. Mm-hmm. What would be equivalent of that on <laughs> your planet? Oh, very juvenile poetry, yes. Is that what you're looking for? Yes. <laughs> uh, just one moment. Actually, nothing comes to my mind at the second. Ask but your friend. I, I will ask my friend. Just a moment. There is a poem, but it has no translation for earthlings, but I will say it to you anyway. All right. There are some words that may have translation, but the, the, the idea of it does not. So, it's uh, Findy, Findy, Tie me dindy, I am ready to see thee, the light of me, unto the kasha tapati. Hello, yes, you're right. Any more of those? It even rhymed. Yeah. And so that was surprising that it rhymed. Well, not it is. Not it is. Do do, do you have any more of those? Um. Did let me check with her. It is I. Rhyming poetry is for children. Yes. <laughs> we have a lot of rhyming poetry. Most of the Russian poetry is rhymed. Ah. That was a, She spoke it to me and I let her speak it through, so. Uh huh. Findy, Findy, I remember that now. Those words mean nothing to you, do they? No. Okay. Shaltai, Baltai, Sidil, Nestinia. That means nothing to me either. <laughs> I'm not set for that language. Oh, here's one I remember. All right. Write with your finger in the sand. Write with your finger. Make it fit your hand. That's very short. What does it mean, fit your hand? Um, your handwriting. Oh, handwriting to become? Yes. Automatic? Yes. Ah, okay. Uh, any alien poetry for your planet which you would, uh, which would be accepted on your planet? We do have several other planets of which we have poetry. One moment. We should stop with the poetry. All right. Do you have any news? Not that I'm allowed to report yet. All right. Oh, I have one more thing uh, related to both. Uh, can you count from 1 to 20 in your language, please? 1 to 20? Yes. It is not the same as your numerical system in the sense that it, it is the same, but it is... Oh, I can't explain it. Just a moment. We count it the same, but we learn it in whole numbers and in other senses of mathematics. Okay. Yai och sen tiki rak och mtu siti tuto raga na sa toro kike la nin. Water, 
together. Pick two. Perfect. Uh, can you do the same in other languages? Say Arcturian, if it is permitted. <sighs> Their language is different, yes. It would be more guttural sounding. One moment. I have to ask permission. Thank you. Since it is not our language. I see no harm though, but uh, I'm not allowed to say it in their language and this is why. They have told me that they do not want anyone to be able to interpret their language at this time. Yeah, but I already got their 20 numbers. You already have them? Yes, yeah, so I wanted to compare. You have their 20 numbers? Yeah. They are unaware of this. All right, they will be soon. <laughs> they still deny me to do that until they are check that information. Perfect. Uh, next would be, can you do Pleiadian? Uh, Pleiadian Aaron. About Aaron what? Uh, 20 numbers. So let me check. Thank you much. Why the, the voice was of uh, Takar? The voice I was just using for inflection. All right. Can you do a yell if you don't mind? You, you will not allow that to It's fine. Fine, fine, fine. Thank you. What do you know about Zanzibar? Zanzibar, the United... The uh, Earthly Zanzibar? or the No, Unearthly Zanzibar. Hmm? Unearthly Zanzibar. What do you want to know? Oh, what's that essence is? What the essence? Yeah. Anything related to creation of the world and the word Zanzibar. One moment. They are in a godly realm. Thank you. Uh, any specifics? They gave shape to some creation. Anything in relation to Zanzibar's siblings, like there was many, several of them, one of which was Zanzibar? Siblings? Oh, brothers, sisters, how do you call energy essences which were created in parallel? I would call them branches or siblings. And what do you want to know about siblings? How many of them were there? There were numerous. All right, that's fine. Thank you. Um, can we change the topic? Um, the era, is it called era as well? Era and era are the same planet in Pleiades? I would assume so. All right. So I just discovered through our friend on Earth that there is a civil war on era right now. Very, a small one, yes. A small one. Between who and who? That is not for me to say. Ah. Uh, but there about, is some worry there, yes. How about reptilians and humanoid Pleiadians? Is it true? I, yes. I haven't written down the name of those reptilians, but that's okay. So, and the leadership has changed, and is it right? In some places, yes. Uh, how many years ago the uh, long-term leader has been, you know, down? How did it downcasted or downcast or downgraded? Due to age, he was very old. One of the leaders was. How long did did he rule? Eighty-seven Earth years. How about the Indian years? Let me translate. Yes. 116, no, 161. All right. So there is a little war. Well, thank you for confirming that. Um, 
Now, the name of the... Uh, how, how the situation does it look? Does, is it still stable? Uh, is Gorkvitnir involved? Gorkvitnir does not involve itself with civil planetary wars. Unless asked to, and they have not been asked to. I see. Is it, it dangerous? Is it bad? It is not that dangerous, only in one sector, which your son, Peter, is not in. Thank you. He is actually far away from that area. Okay. So, our new friend on Earth is Zakaria. Zachariah. Zachariah, sorry. Yeah, in Russian it would be different. No, in Russian it would be Zachar. All right, Zachariah. Um, is there anything which you could share about him which would... He goes public now, and so it would be nice to tell him some nice things or confirm some nice things about him, but, but not to divulge that he doesn't want to divulge. Let me find out what he what does not want divulged. Mm -hmm. I guess he is okay with the fact that he has been taken to Era. Uh-huh. More than once. Uh-huh. His thoughts of that are dynamic. He has been chosen uh -huh. and he knows how to speak Aaron uh -huh. and Arcturian to some extent uh -huh. he has made friends there what else do you want to know uh, and he has visited other planets and other planets and planets it would appear that he has. Why they chose someone so young, I am not sure. They see something in him that they are not disclosing. Okay. High intellect, for sure. Very creative. Any advice for him, mission-wise and otherwise? Yes. Be sure to learn as much as you can when you are on ERA. You know, that goes without saying. But, because you will be staying there at one time. Sometime in the future. All right, uh, here is a little dilemma. Uh, he's interested in engineering and free energy production. Like, you know, energy devices to produce energy on Earth. And I'm interested in uh, designing hidden devices, hidden... Uh, gadgets which would help heal people. Maybe it would be a doctor's intent, but you know, there would be some technology involved, including laser and sound things. Uh, yes. So I'm trying to push him, seduce him. What's the word? Come. That is a nice word, but you know, invite him, invite a good word. Uh, influence? Influence, yes. To move his interest in, into the healing arts. And maybe he could help with his channeling abilities to get more, and his already existing knowledge, to help move that project forward. What do you think about that? Is, uh, there is a little conflict of interest. He is into you know, generators and I am into healing gadgets. There is the cones which do both. Yes. So you can work together to develop them. They can do both. Good. Thank you, you will not need much pushing uh -huh. to work with you on some things. Okay. Thank you. Um, would you like to continue with the questions from, uh, from our readers? I have a little time left, but go. Okay, thank you. Try to make it only one or two questions from each person. That way more people get answers. Alright, so we have Star Fanny. 
Charites. Okay, what Charites? Um, hello, Max. This is my first time to leave a, only, uh, a comment on your website. And before I ask some questions, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude and appreciation to you and Jim for helping both parties, each human and our star family in this judicial transition. The poetry re uh, reciting by our visitors by your request especially has been so endearing in my heart. I feel so much of oneness between all of us in creation. Jesus and, Jesus and Buddha, Buddha's appearance with their love and messages are truly our blessings to us all. Uh, please convey our love, appreciation and gratitude for their help and love and guidance for Earth human to our star family. Oh, that was very nice. Yes. Question one. Are you conductor of human colony, a representative of the Association of Worlds, the Association of Worlds, which is mentioned by Bashar, Adronis, and Yeshua. Obviously, it's not to you, but you may ask the question, answer, answer that question. I am not a part of any of those associations. We are a neutral planet with neutral people. We do not get involved in federations of any sort. However, we do give counseling when necessary. Grook Fickner has also been part of these meetings. They are not official members, but they are considered part of that whole, if that makes sense to you. They are working in the same alliances or same causes as these others. So, and they are Definitely helping. Did I answer that question? You answered, but you didn't pronounce the Association of Worlds. What's the relationship between uh, Association of Worlds and Greg Fittner? The Association of Worlds is much larger than Grook Fittner. Grook Fittner is a smaller section of that. But the Association of Worlds makes up many planets, and it's a loose, loosely bound federation, meaning that they still have their own ideas and concerns and ways in which they believe things should be done, even though they are working together as best they can. Excellent. Is uh, our Orions a part of the Association of Worlds? There are a they have a loose association there in some sects sects of sections. Their, yes. And they have some loose association. How about reptilians? There are some reptilians that are presented, yes. Represented. How about Martians? The Martians come and go. I see. Uh, Zechariah said that uh, Martians were destroyed by Zeta Reticulans. Is it right? Most Martians were. And that's why Zeta Reticulans were locked to their pl current planet? There is much history there to tell to get the correct answer for that. But yes, they are locked to their world uh -huh. but part of that is their own desire and he said that zetaritical islands are very tall is it right yes how tall are they i do not know but i remember them being at least seven of your feet tall how about 20 feet i do not remember them being that tall uh, and he says that Zetas which we see here are only drones, and real Zetas are only locked on their world. Is it right? I would assume that would be correct, yes. Oh, so the Zetas which we, I spoke to, were they from the, their planet or were they local? They were from their planet. Ah, interesting. All right. Thank you. Uh, number two. In last November, I was visited by UFO 
a Starship UFO that looks like a etheric translucent boomerang type of craft while I was strangling on my own de desk uh, deck to in such close appear, uh, approximation that I could amount touch it as it flew over me and same craft, craft appeared same location three weeks later now uh, that's about it any comments on that it was a true craft yes what does she want to know about it uh, which uh, which uh, civilization is that from that is an unusual craft that is not seen very often uh -huh. it came from a place uh, far far from any of the other places at the very edge of the outer galaxy on the other side Outer galaxy, yes. meaning our galaxy. Yes. All right. Okay. They are actually not even known to your government. Okay. They are called Kel. Kel. Thank you. So now I was informed by Andron Adronis, sixth density Syrian, that. Uh, they are representative of the Association of Worlds and one of the hybrid races. As far as I know, we have five different hybrid races, including the Yael, Asani, hmm, Sasani, and Playel. I also uh, have several dreams of witnessing spaceships in my dreams witnessing the spaceships by dreams. So what are the hybrid races? Can you comment on that? What would you like to know? So Yael is a hybrid race? Yes. They're not our descendants, are they? That is a hard question to answer because part of it is yes and part of it is no. Their DNA is very highly part of human DNA. Just like primates are highly part of your DNA, have high amounts of your DNA, they are within 4%, 4 percent of your DNA. They have 96 percent similarity and to 97, ours? Yes. Similarity to yes. ours? Yes. Wow. You already knew that though. Yeah, but I didn't know the number. I thought it was about 50. No. It's much higher. It's just like your primates. They look much different, but yet they share much DNA. Okay. Their looks are much different, and it's within that 4% that their looks change, their physiology. All right. Don't be alarmed. That's Michael playing with the door. No, that's okay. So the question is, uh, Playel, can you tell anything more about Playel? What would you like to know? Uh, I don't know. Um, how were they formed? <sighs> That's going back many centuries. Okay. They are a hybrid race. Let me ask permission if I'm Thank allowed you. to give this information. Thank you. They are part Pleiadian and part, the word is not coming to me for the name of this race. It's fine. Uh, we are inviting Playel to come through eventually, whenever they feel comfortable. Are you, are you, do you have to go? How do you feel? Continue. All right. Uh, do I have hybrid children and am I hybrid human, star fairy? Yes, she's hybrid, but she has no children. She is setting up a time to speak with me, so I will speak to her about that later. All right, so I'll skip a little bit. Should we continue, or do you feel comfortable continuing? Continue. All right. Tuba Buddha is asking, I would like to give a fully informed consent to have the Pleiadians take me whenever they feel they need to. So I'm translating that that he applies to and applies and he gives his full consent yes. to being taken. 
Uh, second, now that I know that the red triangle language is reptilian one, do you know why I was given a download of that language and the information and contained in the first place? Why he was giving a download of a reptilian language, is that correct? Yes, yes. Perhaps they want you to know that they are watching you. Okay. Do you know if my vibration has increased at all? It has. What's the number now? It has raised 0.2 from where it was before. Okay. Four. Have I been contacted in my dream state to be given tests in connection with the program? And if so, did I, how did I do? Meaning the tests for interviews for the colony. You have been interviewed, but I do not know the results of the test. I am not, that information is not available to me. It's only available to the council. I can know, however, that you were visited and interviewed. Thank you. Manga 2014. Hi, my name is Sean. I am from Ireland and I have a few questions to ask you, please. What's my frequency at, the, at this time? 4.2. Thank you. Uh, two, have I been in contact with any alien beings? Yes. Which races? One you yell has visited you. Or was it in reply to the application? It was not. Okay. How frequently will he was visited? A lot or a little bit? Just once. Thank you. Three. Am I a hybrid? It would appear that there is 3% you yield. Oh, wow. All right. Thank you. Three. Four. Have I... Mm, sorry, I just answer it. Uh, what are the you know plans for him in the future in terms of visitations and uh, I do not know what their plans are for visitation. All right. Uh, any advice on his health condition? I am not producing testosterone. This may be part of the outcome of hybridization. Ah, any advice? There are artificial methods, however, they are very, they must be done accurately for testosterone to be, there is much interference. All right, we just uh, suggest... The testosterone must be applied accurately or taken in accurate doses in his particular case for it to be relevant. Um. I guess Yael can look into that, right? I cannot continue. Thank you, Lakesh. Much appreciation for your visit. Mm. Do I fully know? Mm -hmm. Like to lay it down? Mm, okay. All right. Oh, that was sort of rough. Yeah, he got tired. Or oh, you got tired. Some of you got tired. The end there was sort of rough. Uh, he was struggling. He didn't want to leave, but he was struggling, so he left. Should I stop it sooner? Because I felt it's coming. I just, you know, would it be easier on you if I stopped it sooner? No, I don't. I don't. It's always whatever he wants, really. Because he's a, he knows what he can do and what he can't do. I would hope. <laughs> Not really. Uh, I don't think he's that. Honest. I mean, you know, sometimes he kind of over. However, it works.
That was nice. Yeah. Oh. Max. Hello. Greetings. Greetings. This is Takur. Hey, Takur. I didn't speak for, to you for a while. I'd bring news of the colonies. Excellent, thank you. And first contact. Excellent, thank you. The colonies are doing well, except for Colony 2 has been disbanded temporarily. Okay. Colony 1 of Psychics is now 12 strong. Perfect. Four children. Mm -hmm. And eight adults. Guided by very interesting telepathic aliens, three species. Mm -hmm. Third colony video times increased daily. And what's the rate of shooting? 12 to 15 hours a day. Mm -hmm. Are they finishing it to final product or just leave it uh, as pre-final? There is some final products, but they have not been released by Arcturian leaders. But they are edited to satisfaction of the makers? They are aided to the satisfaction of the makers. That's perfect. Because at some point there will be need to pre to release them fast, and if they are not finished, then... There is 26 hours finished. Oh, that's quite 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 a bit, yes. Obviously, I'm, not, I'm asking for more. Uh, not all approved, but all finished. I see. Your request for a hybrid colony or a hybrid, what was it? Project. Yes. Is being considered now. Excellent. There are humans in a colony that is not yet formal. Does that make... No, uh, not yet agreed. They are just there because they are interested in being there and not because they are approved by the council. They have been taken because of their curiosity. It is so exceptional. I need more explanation. Is, is it related to hybrid project or not? No. Okay, so there are some humans which have been taken because they wish to, but they weren't approved by the council which decides who to take. Yes, it's not a colony which Arcturians approve of completely. Is it a special colony? It is. What number is it? It has no number. Oh, a sp is, separate colony, all right. Uh, who is running it? That I cannot say. Okay, so there is a special colony which is run by someone you cannot say, and Arcturians have not made up, up their mind, but they permit for that to happen. There are 20 people there. Uh, how many are from the website? Two. Ah, so how many total from the website have been taken? Eight. Yay! We are making progress. Thank you. Mm, exciting. So, is it the colony which was mentioned before, which is built as a global village to invite people of all different sorts and has increased security so they can take even negative people? Yes. Excellent. This is not approved. I understand. But it is experimental. I see. For 
a short period of time until approval or disapproval is given. Um, I would recommend if it is disapproved, if it is taken down, make special care, make special plan how to return people in a way that wouldn't be harmful for their... That has been considered already. Very good. Because when you dismantle the first colony the first time, it was traumatic. They, we want to avoid being that traumatic for the volunteers. They have to be uh, given time to accept the decision and, uh, and it has to be done smoothly with proper care. Yes. First contact has been moved to 2015. Any more news about the plans? Just the date removal. Moving. Is still the plan to create 10 sites where in different countries and have it customized to different countries? And 12 sites. And to be it um, done physically so people would come physically and meet with people? They have increased to 12 sites. I got it, thank you. So it would be still planned to, do, to be done physically, yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. Anything about broadcasts? Not yet. I see. I must go. Thank you very much for your visit and thank you for the update. That's important. What should we talk about? Is there anything? Uh, you're tired, and I am. Oh, have I no guess, ideas, uh, actually. Give me some ideas, and I'll talk about something. Ask me questions. Oh, ask you questions. Um, hold on, I'm a little fuzzy. I'm fuzzy too. Huh? I'm fuzzy too. I just um, that was rough with Lakesh today. That was unusual. Let's discuss the news by. Um, I guess mm, what, what's bothering me is the civil war in era. We were thinking that Gurkfitnir is stable and full of peace and love and now our most favorite Pleiadians from ERA, they have a civil war and they have a change in government. And that was disheartening. Mm. So we were kind of lived, we lived in uh, love and light and ignored the war and thought that our alien friends are perfect and they're bringing peace. And now, you know, the leadership, Pleiadian people are fighting them on, you know, with their reptilians on their own planet. So It was, it was caused by the reptilians. Whatever, but, yeah. you know, it means that, you know, even up there there is no peace. Not always. Uh, Lakesha's world has peace, though. Yes. <laughs> All right, and I guess that's part of the reality. We have to like be in love and peace, even though there is war. Another news was that draconians live on Earth in 3D. In our physical reality, they have a big cave and they're flying their huge draconians about, you know, but many feet long. You know, that, maybe. That's crazy. <laughs> flying there. Uh, really, that doesn't sound right to me. But it didn't. I, I would assume in some other dimensions, but in our dimension, in a big cave, having a world and a few hundred draconians living there, I it's a little right. bit crazy. A little bit crazy. crazy. And Zakarai also confirmed that, but he said there are millions of them, so hundreds of millions. Maybe in other dimensions are millions, in our dimension is hundreds. But now we have more channelers speaking to us, and Zakarai is one of them, mm -hmm. so I'm so happy we can connect the points. Now they connect like that, but you yeah. know, at some point they, they will build a net. Mm -hmm. And Lakesh confirmed everything Zakaria said, all, almost everything. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, I'm collecting these numbers. I mm -hmm. like count one from 1 to 20, just a signature of the language, and mm -hmm. comparing them. So far, I didn't have many of them to compare, but eventually we'll have. Okay. So whoever comes, they will leave their signature if they wish to. 
and then we we'll compare from other channels and that would be a nice a nice confirmation that would be nice okay uh, why do we worry about confirmations because uh, it's you know it's a dream world it's a dream world we live in a matrix a matrix a, a matrix <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, uh, so far it's creation what we experience here is the creation of our own uh, consciousness we mm -hmm. create this world mm -hmm. but some things are created by many consciousnesses and they become how do you call common become a common place yes okay so like microphone you don't doubt the microphone is in front of us because it's so you know it's so many lives and on television so you you see the microphone you believe it's there i believe it's there it materialized it's manifested it's not only my imagination it's also your imagination as well so everybody agrees that the microphone is here and everybody agrees that jim and i are here <laughs> and we're not jim and i we're Aquari aquarians but that's okay <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm saying, uh, these alien things and draconians and errant things are existing in imagination of much fewer people. It's not even the 1% of population. It's, you know, very few of them. And these draconians in the cave, you know, they just came up recently and they kind of start manifesting, but they didn't manifest fully. They manifest a little bit. So unless you and i you and i and jim and everybody a few of us are digging in that direction the rest of the humanity is still the mainstream they're still living in a world where everything is as it is in mainstream television is different so now we're dreaming a new dream which is much brighter lighter how do you say high vibration what the common world, uh, common world would you use? Mm -hmm. Benevolent, magical, and when more people dream and dr uh, we share this dream with you and everybody else, and when more people dream that dream, it might become become real and kind of spread, and we will call this this awakening, and it it will allow us to join the world of our four-dimensional friends. Okay. Okay. I didn't quite follow all of that, but oh, I get the impression that uh, you're that what he's trying to what you're trying to say is that uh, it's real, but we have to know it before it, we can experience it. We know that it's real. Or it's what? more like surreal. Yeah, and it becomes now it's like three percent real, but it can become ninety-nine percent real if you help us. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's true. You know, everything is sort of real, but not fully real. Well, I know what you mean. Uh, you know, it's same. <laughs> it's real for me in many, many situations, and sometimes it's not real. So. Like, I'm dreaming my dream, I'm living this world, and some things are so reproducible, they are very real. Like, you mm -hmm. bump your head on the, some wall, you think it's really real. But when you talk to Lakesh, the, the numbers, the poetry, it's so real, you know. Mm -hmm. Jim cannot write that much poetry, you know, at once. Even he, if he did his homework and wrote his poetry, and you know, you know that's not right. Jim is real, and when I spoke to Zachariah, he also is real. And what Zachariah says and what Jim says, it's like overlaps a little bit, but, but not fully. So he's in one, his consciousness is, whole consciousness is, is connected to some, some other consciousness. And Jim's is connected to some. So we are making a new dream, new, it's not nightmare, other way around, a new dream. Dream. Yeah. Fairy tale. Fantasy. <laughs> fantasy. But this fantasy becomes more manifested and more manifested and more manifested. So, like, we already published it on the website. And when people apply, next few days they get visitation. And it's out of our hands. It's not we pre we, we making it up. They are joining our... They are being infected by our fairy tale. That's what I'm saying. And uh, it becomes more and more manifested now... 
when the con- open contact happens, it will manifest big way. Mm-hmm. That will be one of the major turning point in the history of our civilization. So now many people who dream some other dreams will be invited to join our dream and the way will, they will join could be very different. Yes. Some will be awakened and welcome it. Many will do. Others will, you know, will, the world will, will be destroyed, basically. They will have a major breakdown. I did it. I had it. 2009, already five years ago. Exactly that time. Exactly a couple of weeks ago. Five years and a couple of weeks ago, I just was awakened to the idea of aliens. I just, just, I, I was going through healing and research of laser therapy, and I thought, and I, the Q key book, I, I have it somewhere on the shelf. Uh, the field by Lynn McTaggart was was eye opener. So I read this book, and everything re- ran true to me. It says no word about aliens, but it was kind of that is right. The chakras are right, I know the chakras are right, I know the energy field is right, I know the healing and the blueprint for the body, all this energy flows and how the cells interact with energy and the importance of DNA for, not only for production of proteins, but for other higher functions. Mm -hmm. And also the premonition and importance of how you look at it, basically, the key experiment, Mike McTaggart, you will understand it's very closely linked. So, if you send an electron through, it's a two slit experiment, two slits. You send an electron beam, and the electrons are kind of particles, but when they go to, through two slits, they behave, at that moment, they behave like a wave. So, they, they have a interference between two waves coming from two slits, and they have a pattern of multiple lines. It's very no, well known in mainstream physics experiments. So the scientists started to experiment how big can be an atom, uh, a, a particle which goes through this two slits experiment. So you send particles and then you have an X-ray film behind or whatever, photograph film or camera behind and uh, you measure the pattern of uh, interference between this. So, so electron is sort of a wave and a particle at the same time. It goes through two slits and becomes, uh, and then it kind of, when it hits the film, it becomes a particle again. But the distribution of these particles is like it is a wave. People already know that, at least they know that as words, but, but the understanding is that our world is not fully digitized, not fully material. It's also wave energy. Now, if you send bigger particles, you still get that pattern. So, when the book was written about seven years ago, uh, the biggest particle they could send was a 100 atom crystal. It was perfect crystal. I forgot the name for it, but it is 100 atoms. It looked like a big football. Uh, so, the crystal of 100 atoms can be sent through these two slits, and it still would do a pattern of wave distribution. So even something made, even a crystal can can behave like a wave. So now imagine you have two doors and you go in simultaneously through the, through two doors and behave like a wave and there are multiple uh, results of you going through the two doors. Like, you know, mm-hmm. sometimes you have two doors open mm-hmm. and you can go around them. All you go through the forest and you kind of it's an interference of you with the force. There are multiple outcomes. So, so basically, just one of, one of the major quantum physics experiments saying that we are not fully material. We are sort of waves. And another experiment McTaggart described was that it's a great book, The Field, um, that you, when you guess things right, like you guess cards, like you, you have a card and you kind of guess what, is, uh, what was the card, it's not only that you guess it right, you have a premonition, you also affect how they come out. You, by your mental intention, you can affect. And the ones who guess it right, affect it in a way that it comes in a way... The card, until you look at it, it's not really defined. But when you look at it, it's now it's kind of... Uh, fixed in your reality. You get into the... So it's not that you guess things, but you make your reality in a way the card you guess 
comes up. And some people are good in making the reality the way you like it, and some people good otherwise. You want one way, and reality is always turned the other way around. Mm -hmm. So some people get 51%, like normally, like if you throw a coin, you get, statistically, you have to get 50% head and eagle, how do you call it? Head, tails. Head and tails. And some people can force it to be 51 percent very typical it's very for most people it's possible to get it to 51 percent some people if they're really talented they can get it to 55 percent people when they do collective synchronous meditation they can get it even to close to 60 percent especially good at twins and people in love when people are in love uh, they both can affect much more so you can really affect how reality comes out okay and yesterday I was I lost my wallet and I, now I realize why I lost my wallet my guides didn't want me to go somewhere and I didn't get it <laughs> uh -huh. I didn't get it I, I you know I took some other money I went and helped someone but yeah. later I realized that I didn't need to because that harmed me in a way it was a stress and uh -huh. the person already solved the problem so they didn't need my help yeah. so but I called Jim <laughs> and Jim prayed and I found my wallet so people can by prayer and other things by intention and meditation can affect the reality how it comes mm -hmm. out and their guides also messing up or other way around fixing things in the in the reality mm -hmm. so that only realization there in 2009 helped me to awaken to the idea of alien so i googled the word alien and for me visual is most important so i did uh, graphics uh photographs and I'm pretty good in analyzing photographs, so I, <laughs> I really I, I understood that it was for real. I understood for the, some of those uh, crop circles were absolutely amazing. So I researched the aliens, and two weeks I was just not, day and night I was sitting on the computer, and after about a few days it was completely clear for me that you know they exist for real. So even in this collective dream where most 99% of people dream that they don't exist. They really manifest one way or another. And Jim, uh, can you tell your story about last night um, noises? Well, last night, I don't know how many people have watched. They know who Fission is. Fission is my guard uh, sent by uh, these dude to keep out anything negative in into coming into me or harming me negative aliens or spirits or entities of any sort. Last night I woke up, Fission woke me up, and he wanted to tell me that not to go downstairs. And I go, well, I was asleep. I wasn't going to go downstairs anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> But he said, just in case, I just don't want you to go downstairs. And then I started hearing noises downstairs. I heard some hissing, I heard some grumbling and growling, and I, it wasn't frightening, but Fission said, do not bother who is downstairs. I woke you up to tell you that if you got woken up by these entities, not to go downstairs. So, I don't know what was downstairs, but I could hear them. And so I listened for a while, and they were there for maybe 15 or 20 minutes and then they were I didn't hear anything anymore so I assume they were gone so but um, I had several visits last night so other visits as well well Muhammad visited I told yes, you about that yes. and oh. uh, I had another visit by somebody else that I don't know who it was just gave me a little personal something so um, yeah so that was very unusual. I didn't ever have that before. So we don't know who that was. We really don't know mean? who that was, but Fishin woke me up to tell me that. So. I forgot to ask Lakesh about it, but we'll do it later. Okay. Jim has a you know, direct line up there. He will, he will find it out. So I don't know who was downstairs and why they were in my downstairs. You would think they would want to talk to me if I was there, but Fishin told me that they were downstairs and they don't go down. So maybe they just wanted to have a dinner and cook <laughs> some pasta. <laughs> I don't know. Or I have no idea what they did or why they were down there. I had watched no your television 
or install the uh, spy software? Uh, no, or is it install have... spy software. No, like install have, spy software. software yeah. yeah, spy cameras or something. <laughs> I don't know, they could, who knows? So Jesus suggested that we share our lives with everybody yes. and yeah. you know, tell more about who we are. I can't tell everything. I really can't. You know, I, can't. It's, I, have some I can't either. I can't tell everything either. I have some secrets which are not bad, but you know, it wouldn't sound right. And I, it might I can't harm, either, Bill. harm me or others, so why, why, you know. But not, nothing, to, not, nothing terrible. But I can share a little bit, and you prepare yourself, um, <laughs> a little bit more. Um, so I'm a, a mainstream gene, uh, genetics expert, unemployed at the moment, and uh, I run a company which is, has no money, uh, but it's registered official mainstream company, to develop a therapy. And that is as close as I can get in mainstream to alien technology. So obviously it's a continuum. On one hand, there is a mainstream science which is focused on drugs and harming people in many ways, but mostly by poisoning them. On the other hand, there are beautiful alien technologies where they can do everything by intention, thought, wonderful laser and sound healing techniques and mostly these are transdimensional they are on other dimension and they transdimensionally can heal many things they can grow bodies they can grow organs they can um, uh, transfer the soul from one body to another so uh, in most cases they can um, even you know, if somebody is killed for them, it's not a big deal because they can transfer the whole experience to a new body, and and that is much easier for them. So killing for them is not a big deal. I mean, killing, death for them is not killing is a big deal because you kind of limit the experience, but not as big as here. So uh, so they can do many. Uh, my friend was treated for for. Uh, is a chain smoker and was he was treated he was treated for lung cancer by aliens on the ship and um, he is still now and keeps smoking unfortunately but but they 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 cut it out from him the the lung cancer and you know the metastasis they removed from him uh, another abductee serial abductee how do you call it a lifelong abductee is uh, has been, you know, broken completely his knee and it was completely restored by the aliens. They can do miracles. Uh, so how do you combine these technologies? And there is a book by Adrian Veer, uh, X3 Extraterrestrial Medicine. It's called X3 is a keyword, X3. Uh, so, and it's about Yale and their medicine. Mm. I read, I read this book and uh, and few uh, many other books and I'm following the field of DNA, mainstream DNA and lasers. That's that's where the alien technology and mainstream technology meet together. Uh, when you hear the advertisements about red light hair growth treatment and red light uh, smoking cessation treatment or red light, infrared light, uh, obesity treatment, how to get a slimmer with red light. Some of that is, is true. There is a good science. There is a, obviously there is much of, you call it profanation of faking science mm -hmm. on some borderline. Some people will sell you a laser pointer and say it's a healing device, which it, which in, in, a, in a way it is, but you know, the laser pointer costs 10 bucks and they can sell it for a much more expensive price. So, mainstream science knows a bit on laser therapy. It it's, has been researched by alternative mainstream science. Alternative mainstream, how the... Uh, they're still in the, in the labs, they're still professors or researchers in official labs, but it's not well funded, <laughs> so they do it in mainstream labs, but using their own funds. Like many of them are MDs, meaning doctors, they get salary from treating patients, and they put a little bit of their own money into that research, and uh, so research has been done and published in mainstream journals. So that is done. Uh, genetics goes pretty far now, we can create a lot of new things, and artificial hybrid plants are mainstream thing. Uh, now combine these lasers and, um, and genetics, there is a field of optogenetics, which is an exciting field. It's now on the level of 
experimental mice, but you really can control the behavior of mice with the laser. Now it's possible. So mind control on the mice is now a real thing for about seven years. It's called optogenetics. It's again mainstream. And that's as far as human mainstream science goes to, to laser medicine. But you can go much further. And, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm uh, raised in funding officially mainstream, not not here, not out as a child, but but it would be nice to combine the two, I wish. Uh, to raise the funding and do the uh, the real research to benefit humans by bringing the technologies from the aliens and and giving them to humans. And the main advantages would be I see the main uh, applications obviously in uh, immediate applications would be for inflammation disorders which are arthritis there is so much disability on our from arthritis uh, Crohn disease and uh, psoriasis so basically when inflammation hits your organs there is you know every organ can be can be affected by inflammation the brain and so on uh, psychic disorders can be treated with that. Obviously, you need to make sure it's not misused. Obviously, anything can be misused, but but uh, so it's part of our activity. If we get funded, we will publish and discuss it openly. Um, obviously, the secret government, secret military, secret other projects, negative people, they have much more of those technologies, but they are not giving them away. They are using them for more for negative purposes, for programming the soldiers, cloning the soldiers, that sort of thing. But we want it public, we want it for, for good purposes. Obviously, there is a danger here, and the more we do it publicly, the better. So that's my main development. And uh, I uh, submitted a provisional patent in the past, and uh, the, my previous company. The idea was to play a music so we know the whole human genome, you know, all three billion nucleotides, and I'm an expert on that. I really dig and I can read it, not by eye, but using software. We can read, we know that 3% of that are protein coding genes, another 6% of that is also important sequences which mainstream science doesn't know what it is. And I have a pretty good guess that these are the genes, the sequences which are responsible for vibration of DNA. So DNA is not uniform. There are pieces of DNA, the sequences which we, we can pinpoint in the genome which are important for vibrational properties of the DNA. Uh, I guess, uh, should I pronounce standing waves, scalar waves maybe, are important there. And there is some research indicating that the vibration is there, some mainstream research. But the aliens tell us lots more about that. Unfortunately, they don't give us the technologies yet, and possibly they would not give them anytime soon the technologies until we have a platform here, until we have the scientists, the mainstream academic, not mainstream, academic scientists, academically minded scientists who are ready to take these technologies and use them for good purpose. They already gave some technologies to the, the aliens, gave some technologies to the bad military guys and they misused it so they're very reluctant to give them to mainstream military so we need to create a grassroots uh, platform of academic grassroots academic companies academic scientists organizations which would be ready to accept those technologies and basically they might the alien might the alien might give us more insight where to go than than you know the whole package of technologies. So, so it has to be double game. We make a step, they make a step. We make a step. So now we have some people who go up and down. They learn their technologies up there, eh, but you know, are they allowed to give them away? No. So, so, so that's you know the paradigm. I guess I could formulate it better, but right now it's my my level of verbalizing the problem. We have to prepare the community of scientists here who are trained to think in that, who are open-minded, who can, you know, tolerate the word extraterrestrial, which is not easy to find. So I'm looking for funding and collaborators and people who can, you know, who I can discuss the things on a good scientific level. There is a lot of people who can speak about 12-stranded DNA, 24-stranded DNA, uh, 528 frequency, which is unfortunately, it's all. It's not. It's not reality in our physical world. It's. Uh, it's. Uh, it's. It's kind of a fantasy which I can't really put in the lab. 
Uh, but some of that can be put in the lab. Uh, our two-stranded DNA can be radiated with light, and it can be radiated with light from lasers uh, programmed by the computer, and it can be done on... Uh, I'm not ready to do it on humans yet. We should do it on small models like cell culture, uh, nematode worms, which are very nice. They grow to full adult size in about two weeks, so it's a very nice, easy model. And you can do controlled experiments. You send that DNA sequence through the laser, you could encode it into, it would be like a color music. You, you send the sound as music, you send a color, uh, color, laser colors, multiple lasers shining different colors. Unfortunately, it requires quite sophisticated technology because it has to be done a secret on terahertz, terahertz frequency, very high frequency. And that's a little bit expensive, but our technology also goes there mostly because of our communication technologies, especially the military, they like to send a lot of information quickly to their missiles, so they develop very quick uh, laser guidance system, so they created these terahertz lasers. And uh, now we can use these military lasers to shine and, and heal because we can encode in this laser, we can encode genetic sequences. We know the genes, we know the sequences, so now the, the experiment we want to do, I want to do, is very simple. Take the sequence, encode it in a very simple laser, laser not the whole genome, just a small important sequence, send it into a laser, it's called um, acousto-optics, opto-acoustics. So acousto-optic, um, a uh, system which would send the sound and light into a, uh, an experimental system in mainstream lab. I have to get approvals for that and see how it goes. And if it helps the worms to be to become healthier and bigger and grow faster, then we go to plants, maybe like corn, which grows a little slower, or we can go to mice and we can treat mice. Unfortunately, within these experiments, you probably have to hurt a mouse first and then you treated from that but but that's a good model and will be humane and will it will help to treat humans eventually it, it would help treat cancer and many other disorders and finally after we realize after we understand how we manipulate the austral austral blueprint the etheric body how we manipulate it with lasers and sound we can possibly start growing organs like teeth eyes, internal organs, joints, uh, because we already can put the tissues together, but you need to create an energy body for that organ, energy field for that organ. So that can be done with lasers, and, and most likely you will also need some consciousness. So it will be a combination of an instrument and the consciousness of a healer. So maybe we would have five healers praying and some sort of laser instrument amplifying their prayers and directing that to to recreate healthy energy body and to create to heal the wounds and recreate the organs. So, so it's a combination. I understand that because you know you can't manipulate the higher higher level bodies from the third dimension. You have to raise yourself to fourth dimension and do that partly in higher dimensions. So uh, I'm inviting uh, help here as well. And um, right now I'm a little bit big waste. I'm right now I'm big waste stuck on here. I have these ideas for already hmm, since 1999. Hmm, how many years? 15 years. And so far, experiments I was able to do that with that were a tiny, hmm, very few experiments. Some of that I just published. Some of that I'm still uh, hesitant to publish because I don't have enough data to show that. Obviously, when you when you do a little bit here, you can get a Nobel Prize and get become famous and all, all, all those things. <laughs> but uh, but the importance is that uh, you know when you discover uh, mainstream science still is very retarded in a way that they don't understand the vibrational part. They don't understand the transdimensional part. Uh, the, the fact that the cells is vibrating, uh, only recently, the, like a couple of months ago, the paper came out saying that the protein is vibrating in terahertz uh, level. You know, the science, alternative science predicted that for a long time, but finally the mainstream scientists discovered that. So uh, when I spoke to this dude and asked, what frequency should I use for my uh, system? He said, you know, what, first you have to measure at what frequency your cell vibrates. And I said, how do I measure it? He said, yeah, I don't have the 
the technology yet, yet. It was before that the discovery. So now there is a technology to measure at which frequency the, the DNA vibrates and then you heal it with that frequency, So and it, which is likely to be terahertz frequency. So that's where we are. That is that's a big, big part of my life. Unfortunately, I'm stuck there and I need help. Uh, my alien friends predict that I will be working in that direction. I, I'm, I'm kind of wish it was true. I wish it is true. It will be. I wish it will be true. Um, even if there will be a crisis of 2027, after that we'll still need that healing technology. So. Yes. So when uh, knowledge is out of the box, when finally the mainstream scientists get it, we'll, we'll be able to heal much more, treat the mental disorders, treat the organ disorders, treat you know the, even the the old age, even the obesity, which I think is very largely is lifestyle, which is energetic blockage. So. <coughs> Technology can also help that. And understanding how it works will also help healing that. Mm -hmm. I guess, Jim, now tell me a bit <laughs> more about who you are. Well, after that, I'm, I'm a very simple person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a very simple person. I live simply, and I do a lot of uh, praying and meditating, and I try to uh, help as many people as I can. I get involved with... Uh, Charities like uh, the homeless, Dorothy Day House, and things like that, and um, I do Reiki also. There's a lot of things that you just don't. I, I'm sort of a private person, so whenever I saw the the video that Jesus said to share everything about yourself, that was very uncomfortable for me. So because I I have a little trouble. Tell me about. Sure. What were you in mainstream life? What was your you know, uh, I mission used to, in mainstream life? I worked retail. I was a retail manager for many years, and then I was a uh, custodial manager, which they called environmental services manager. What is it? And it's uh, like a custodial manager. I don't know what it is. Um, maintenance manager, where for housekeeping. Uh, floor care. Like factory? Uh, no. Tell the cleaners college. to clean it? Yeah, clean. Call. It was a college. Ah. I Nazareth College. I was a clean. I was the manager for all the cleaners, the house cleaners, the floor cleaners, and the setup crews. And now so, you're an expert in cleaning, and you clean houses. Yeah, I own. clean houses on my own. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I do not have a regular job at this time. Uh, the uh, atmosphere in Rochester is very uh, not good for for getting a job. I could get a part-time job and I'm thinking that I might do that now. So, But um, I can get part-time jobs but not full-time jobs. They're just they won't hire me full-time. Yeah, we're old guys and it's... We're hard. old, yeah. And they look at and say they don't how do you figure into our future? And if you're getting close to retirement age, you really don't figure in very well. How far so, are you from retirement age? I'm 59. Is it like so six years? 60, you can retire at 63, I think. Oh, so only a few years more and you're... So, well, I, I don't know. Well have, off. <laughs> you, I don't think so. But anyway, um, and I'm... Um, Tell me about your childhood. I was uh, very, very, very naive. I was a blank sheet of paper as a child. Uh -huh. I mean, I was pr very protected. Um, I didn't... I trusted everyone implicitly, and I did not believe that there was any bad in the world. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. I was pretty much uh, very naive. Of course, I got punished for doing things that I wasn't... I didn't even know that it were bad, the, even sometimes. So, uh, but um, yeah, I was just very curious. So, same, anyway, same did I. I was naive, and I'm still naive. <laughs> yeah, same, same here. <laughs> I do trust people until they give me a reason not to trust them. So, in that way, I never really came out of that because I want to believe that there's good in everybody, and I believe there is good in everybody. So, and I believe everybody can have a greater good in them. So. Do you remember being taken by aliens at any time? No. 
don't any, remember any ever miracles you. like saints appearing to you um i had miracles happen to me yes huh. i had when i was in the second grade i miss all of second grade because i was very ill with staph and strep infections and back then the medication wasn't working and uh, they took me to a healer and the healer uh, cured me so and i was fine for after that and i went out and had celebrated with a peach melba dessert and <laughs> what kind of healer was that it was i don't know if anybody's ever heard of katherine kuhlman but uh she was from the pittsburgh area but what but kind of that was? she was a faith healer faith healer faith healer Yes. So she prayed and... Right, and she could see angels, and she could Did see... Did she lay hands on you? Uh, yes, she laid hands on me, and many times when she laid hands on people, they would fall over, what they would call slain in the spirit. So, uh -huh. And when she went over to the edge of the choir, she had a huge choir behind her, and she touched the one lady at the end, and the whole choir fell down. And I will never forget that. And uh, um, you saw that? Yes. I'll never forget that the whole choir fell down and nobody was hurt. And it was just a it was like a dominoes. <laughs> <laughs> the spirit went through all of them. So she was very a very powerful healer. She had definitely a very high sp spiritual vibration. So um but I was young. I was very young when We should do that too. We take a carpet People in like, <laughs> <laughs> yes. I don't think it was the same thing, but uh, a lot of people when they she touched them would fall over, and they had somebody there waiting to catch them. Right, right, right. And um, a lot of these people, I, my grandmother, my mother, all these people, they would just fall right over. So I know that it wasn't fake because I know that my mother wouldn't fall over in front of anybody to save her life unless it was actually real. So. <laughs> But I didn't fall over when she touched me. Yeah, same happens. I I researched John the John of God. Yes. Why did they do it? Lakesh sent me to John of God. He said that this would be the closest to incarnation of Jesus. Not that Jesus is great, but it's a, you know the same level of energy, high energy, John of God who who incarnated on Earth, and that's mm -hmm. uh, an important thing. And I, I watched the video and lots of videos and researched it and you know it was important for me to find it out and as usual the conclusion is inconclusive mm -hmm. um, he does miracles no question people fall no question people get profoundest spiritual experiences no question but in addition he does very simple uh, tricks which are of you know of the type of you know College kids tricking or I don't know. It's called snake oil, snail, snake oil tricks, which are visible on the camera. So a profound prophet would also do something on camera which would discredit all of what he does. So so there is a filtering system. Mm -hmm. People who believe get get what they want. People who want to discredit him have you know can discredit them in no time because he does it. I don't even know why he does it. Maybe it's intended to spook away anybody who has doubt. Right. Because he does cheap tricks. Okay. Like, imagine Jesus who would, you know, hide, you know, how do you, have crop, cropped, cropped cards? How do you say? Uh, marked? Marked cards, yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. Or play, you know, some other cheap tricks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that sort of thing. All right. Anything else? Your story was nice, but there was a little. We need spice in it. How about tell about how do you feel the energies when you speak to guides? How do how does it feel? Well, I I sometimes I feel uh, very light, and sometimes I feel very heavy. It depends on who it is, the spirit that's coming in is or the alien or whatever because the enlightened spirits like jesus and muhammad and mm -hmm. buddha they're very very light they're very light feeling uh but others can be very harsh feeling like the reptilians and some of the earth spirits the spirits from the 
past Earth can be a little bit harsher too. Now today the cash was a little bit harsh at the end, yeah. but um, it wasn't on purpose. I think that he was having some difficulties. Okay. So, but usually he's not not like that. Can so. you share something for others to practice? Like, how do you meditate? Oh, I meditation. I just um, sit and I'm quiet. And a lot of times I think about um, I, I think about the word healing and love. And um, I uh, bring a, I see a light inside, and I try to uh, make the light bigger. Sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. So, but usually I I end up saying prayers during my meditation. What time. sort of prayers do you use? I just uh, thank God for being who He is and helping us with all the things, and I pray for better healing and for others and I pray for love and peace on the earth and I pray, pray for uh, uh, the aliens to have a good connection and I have I pray for uh, prosperity for you and me and I pray for uh, healing for those and I send out the um, and um, What's that? It's a Reiki prayer? Yes, it's a long distance healing and I see. Um, long, you know, the Christ in me meeting the Christ in you, yes. and so. Mm -hmm. um, you do it in uh, Japanese, right? Yes, okay. and I, I do the uh, symbols in my mind, and I do the choku ray with some people. It's Reiki symbols. Also, yes. Yeah, so, good and I'm, but Takur, who is uh, also very into Reiki, on the Liren, uh, one of our Liren aliens, also has shown me. How to do some Takurian <laughs> Reiki, and uh, she has uh, amplified the symbols for me. Uh, the Choku Rei is a little different. The symbols for that, the Honchozaisho, and then is um, pretty much the same, except it's more flourished. I don't know how to say that. It it has it some of the the symbols have little loops in them so uh when i see them when she shows them to me they have little loops in them that i don't know why but they make the energy stronger so it's like she takes the symbol and just changes it slightly so that it's more powerful can you do a prayer for prosperity for real like say it say it with meaning yes Please do it. Well, oh, oh, right now? Yeah, vocally, yes. Okay. All right. <sighs> I just want to thank you, uh, Lord, for all the things that you do for us. And we are very blessed to have the things that we have. And you've been good to show us much about yourself and your love and your goodness and your happiness. And we just ask for you to bless us with prosperity as well. We need and we know that you are a deliverer of needs and you hear our needs and you love us. If we, one of your scriptures is, if we ask for bread, would you give us a scorpion? And of course not. So Lord, we just thank you and praise you that you are going to help us with our finances and our with us all the time through the the good and the bad. I know that sometimes the bad comes so that we can build our character and that we can build our faith and not falter. So we just ask, Lord, that you would help us and help us uh, in this time frame for prosperity, love, and guidance. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. I do a lot of praying, so. Very good. Uh, thank you. It, it helps. Because, yes. you know, everybody prays differently. Mm -hmm. And art of praying is art. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I say that prayer, I say a very similar prayer a lot, so. <laughs> what do you mean? You repeat it? No, I, I say something say? similar. I see. 
when I pray a lot. And I also start praying about healing and I pray about love and the people that I know that are that are sick and ill. I after I do my meditations, then I send out a, a Han Shonen then with a Choku Ray to for specific people. So mm-hmm. how would I say the prosperity prayer? I would say I would say, and, oh, go ahead. Well, I wanted to add, Lakesh has certain people that when I meditate, he sends extra energy to them. Mm-hmm. He gives. He gave me some certain symbols to send to certain people for certain kinds of healing. So there are like three or four um, of Lakesh's symbols that I have to send out daily to help others. Oh, Lakesh's symbols? Yes. Would you like to share those, or is it those are share? those are not to share yet? They will be for to share so at one time, but we can't not share them yet. So, hmm. but yes, he's uh, he has some special friends out there that I've channeled with, and he's met and talked to, and has given me the instructions to send them certain energies. You know who you are. So. so how would I do it? I would do very simple. Um, I would do, I would lay down, close my eyes, put my headphones, my mask, mm-hmm. turn the incense on, invite um, specific energies to to enter me or to get in contact with me. I, I usually invite Nina to get in contact with me and she comes as flash of light. Um, I invite the Creator to 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 bless me and to get in contact with me. I invite my higher self to enter me if it's appropriate for him. And for prosperity, I would say I invite universal energies to help me with finances, to help my family with finances. Amen. I'm invite. I'm inviting my guides to help my family with finances, amen. I I invite the universal energy to help my family with finances, amen. That's that's simple. And then I get get on the other side. I typically, 99%, I get on the other side. And it's like a daily miracle for me, at least twice a day or three times a day, whenever I meditate. I get on the other side. And without any alarm clock, I get back exactly the right time when I need to. Yes. Say if I have a and meeting, a meeting, mm-hmm. or somebody knocks on the door, or something unexpected happens, completely unpredictable, mm-hmm. I will get back right about four minutes in advance. So I'm here, and that unpredictable happens. A phone call or something like that, and I almost never am interrupted with uh, with the phone calls or stuff. I also have typically I turn off the phone. I, there is a nice yeah. application on Android. You can. You can program your meditation for 40 minutes, the, the rings are down, and then it go, goes back on. So you don't have to remember to do oh, it. Nice. It's called yeah. shash, 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 shash. shash. <laughs> All right, All right let's good. do another meditation, another prayer. Um, I wanted to, sp- yeah, so last two days I am swamped. You know, like you juggle the balls, you feed the kids, kids need to be fed. Yes, and we need to feed the kids. And you have to fix that, fix that, and our plumbing was broken, and our... Um, I'm looking at that camera, but I need to look at that camera. And our <laughs> uh, plumbing was broken, and our um, other things like fall apart, and there is this... It was, we were doing sports, so there is a stack of you know, clothes which is on all, right, right there on the tennis table. Uh, so. And I was just swapped. And good things happen as well, but uh, I was just overwhelmed. So what do you pr- how do you pray for, you know, get things done and be less overwhelmed? I just say, um, I pray for your will to be done and to help us get things done, or help you me get things done. Help me to remember everything. I write things down, but I forget to look at them. How about, so, how about you do it for real? Oh, okay. If you don't mind. Uh, to do, to... Uh, Just say as if it is for real. Uh, 
Um, I forgot what I'm doing. Uh, <laughs> See, that's what happens. If you are swamped with a lot of things, uh, yes, yeah, so which I am. Yeah. Okay. I go. I just pray that Lord, you help me get everything done appropriately. That I don't offend anyone. That I speak the right words to everyone. That things come through as positively as possible, Lord. That your will be done in this. That this white light and the Spirit are all in all in conjunction with everything that should be happening. I just want to stay in an integral, in high integrity. I want to stay in honesty and goodness and just help me get it done as quickly and as, as possible. And thank you and I love you and um, I just give you all the praise and I believe that you will help. Amen. How do you how do you feel? Uh, how do you communicate with your higher self? What's the feeling? How do you know the answers? How do you send the messages? How do I send messages to higher self? Yes. Um, I just uh, the higher self hears everything you say. However, when I do talk to him, which is rare, I, the light is actually out around my body, and he's the light is encompassing him as well to come closer to me mm -hmm. and then I can speak to him a little more clearly but for someone who never spoke to higher self right. how would you recommend to start just uh, make sure you uh, mention that you're talking to your higher self to begin with I I don't even know my higher self's name so but I know your higher self's name <laughs> but um, I talk to my higher self and ask him questions, and I, I, get, I thank him for watching over me, and I think that's a good way to start, is to say thank you for watching over me, because to recognize him is to get his attention, and to get his attention or her attention is to, to, to recognize him, so, um, and talk to them, and then they will know that you appreciate what they're doing for you, and guiding you and making decisions that will help you in your life for the most part. Sometimes they cannot steer you away from trouble but uh, because that's part of uh, what you have to go through but <coughs> many times they can take away the little things that are troublesome. <coughs> Does that make any sense to you? Of course. Sure. Uh Thank, being thankful is what I'm being advised by many higher yes, beings. Yes, thankfulness is wonderful. You get a lot of joy from being thankful. You know, a lot of people forget that um, the things that you have are not all because of you, but because of what's in you. Like the spirit has given you, they might have given he might have given you drive or intelligence or whatever. So you have to thank him for that because it's not just you; it's you and your spirit. So, and your intellect, the things that were given to you by God. So, thank God for those things. Uh, in one of Jesus' challenges, um, there was a question: Is it appropriate to heal someone who doesn't want to be? Killed by you, so um, he said that no, you 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 know you can invite things, but you don't want to force things. That's correct. Kind of. So the, the key word is inviting. I I never, but basically that's my main approach to prayers at the moment. A lot lately, that I never force anything. You know, I don't ask. I only invite. If they wish to come, that's fine. If they don't. And also Bashar said, you know, you, sometimes people say, I don't want to bother someone because I'm not sure if they want to be bothered, even mm -hmm. humans or not humans. But Bashar says, you know, you have to have self-appreciation and self-value that at least you can ask. Mm -hmm. You don't have to force them to do anything, but at least you can ask. So, so asking for donations, inviting, 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 the, the God inviting higher self to do that and that is very appropriate. Okay. Uh, apply when you say it that way. You don't want to, you know, no, no, please, please, please take me, but I apply. If you, if it's appropriate, 
I apply, I wish to go, I commit. So committing and inviting are much more respectful things. You make a first step and then wait for the higher spirit to do their step. So for the higher self inviting, you know, maybe they're busy, other stuff. Like I was told that a higher self cannot be great in many lives. They typically focus on one life we are the greatest possible one incarnation but in others they kind of mm -hmm. do less important things because if they become great in two lives they mess up in both so i hope that my higher self want to be great in this life but apparently he already have been great in some other life so why would he uh so he kind of keeps me low but it, it still there is some something i can do even on that low level um i'm not so sure that he, if he can't be great again, but the, a little bit of greatness would be good. And but I don't think that that's part of it. I think that um, he was very. That's a very. He was very ancient, so his greatness was long, long, long ago. Yeah, but how about being uh, rich and prosperous? Well, that's different. <laughs> that's different than what he was. Right. So. Uh, now let's do a real prayer for our listeners and stop. And what should we pray about? What should we give them? Mm -hmm. uh, I guess things. Uh, the moon is kind of waning. Is it right or waning? Yes, it's oh, waning. Coming, waning. 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 So things are kind of went up. Now was the crisis, a mess. Now it kind of goes down. So on the way down, it's kind of way down, right? Some things go up and way down, but most things go down. You have to like really accept it. So let's help with transformation and acceptance. Even things go down. It's just a part of the cycle. I want, I want everyone who watches to accept themselves for who they are and their perfection. And the, everything that, that is within them is part of them. And if it's not, I want them to l let it go. Because to be your best self, to be who you are, without having to lie to people when you meet them and say, "Oh, I'm I'm this way or that way," be being honest and being yourself is the most beautiful thing that you can possibly be. Because that's when your greatness comes out. That's when you learn about your the things that you are to do in your life. That is the when you find out your connections to reality and to those people that are truly with you in your in your thoughts and minds so i want you to be your true self your full self your perfect self and do not deceive yourself about who you are so be honest with yourself is basically and, and then so you can become who you really are I want to connect that to a lot of people out there because sometimes the world gets so crazy, you forget who you are. Connect with yourself, meditate with yourself, go into yourself and see who you are. That way you can reach out with light and connect with others. Now is the end of the winter and it's the deepest part of death deepest part when things fall apart all everything decays you don't have anything to hold on to because everything is death and within that death you have to accept it you, you don't have to but <laughs> if you accept it 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 is very healing it's part of life it's the end of the cycle and within that end of the cycle when you accept it when you stop fighting it you just discovered it's the spring already started hooray the spring is already here there is frost long nights freezing crunchy snow at least in our part of the world and within that there is birth yes there is hope Things fall apart and then grow again and fall apart and grow again. Playfulness. When you play, when you pray and play, it gives you something to hold on to. You know, if you can't find yourself, play and you will find yourself. <laughs>
Yeah, because we honestly do like to enjoy ourselves. So that's part of who we are. It's part of what we we were made to be. So, yes, enjoying ourselves is one of the joy is who we're made to be, who we're made to be like. God is joy, so we should be like Him. We should be like Him. Goodbye. Thank you for watching. Thanks.